So thank you very much for the introduction. So yeah, I'm Philippa or Pip, if you want to call me my, my shorter name. Um, so I'm the sales manager um, for EMEIA, which is Europe, Middle East, India, and Africa here at Scientifica. Um, so I'd really like to thank the organizers of this um, meeting for the in invitation to talk to you today. So as I said in the introduction, I did my PhD at the University of York, and this was a long, long time ago now. Um, and this was before I started my career in sales. Um, however, I do remember my first poster session um, at a conference at the University of Edinburgh like it was yesterday. Um, it was a really daunting but very valuable experience. I'm not sure how many of you have already presented a poster at a conf conference or whether you're just about to embark on it, um, but hopefully this will be a useful talk for you. Um, I was lucky at the time, I had a great supervisor who helped me to prepare for the talk and I really, really enjoyed it. Now, over the last few years, I guess most of us have been stuck at home um, but now things are opening up. I hope that you're all going to have the opportunity to attend conferences and present your work in the coming months. Um, so today's talk is uh, just a few tips on how to present your poster at a conference. First, if I may, um, I'd like to just briefly introduce our company, Scientifica. Um, some of you may not have heard of us before. Um, we're based in Uckfield in the UK. And we're basically a one-stop shop for high quality equipment for electrophysiology and multi-photon imaging. So these are techniques used by neuroscientists to study the structure and function of cells and structures within the brain. Um, and this slide just shows a couple of our products and some images. So two of our microscopy systems, our slice scope, which is fitted with our world-renowned patch star micro manipulators and our vista scope multi-photon imaging system. So Scientifica is a fantastic place to work. We attract the best people to be part of our passionate team. So if you're ever looking to move from academia into industry, do look us up and we'd love to hear from you. Anyway, onto the topic at hand. So you've been lucky enough to be invited to present a poster at a conference um, and you're thinking about how to prepare for the event. So before the event, there are a few things you really need to line up to make sure that you're confident when you attend. Um, so you may want to make sure that you create your poster in plenty of time so you can check it for quality and for errors. Um, you don't want to make sure that you don't want to see that you get your poster last minute and there's a tear in it or there's a typo or a formatting error and you've run out of time to fix it. So that's probably the most important thing to do there. Um, also, it's useful to create and memorize an elevator pitch and a research story. I'll cover them a little bit on the next couple of slides. It's essential then that you practice your presentation. And I must say this goes for a, um, a poster presentation or a short presentation over PowerPoint at a conference. These sorts of preparations are very, very useful. So practice, practice, practice before you um, go to your conference. This will give you much more confidence and we'll talk a little bit about that later. So if you haven't created a poster yet, <clears throat> you might wanna take a look at some of our other articles on our NeuroWire blog. So there's three articles on there that might be useful. The first one is how to get the most out of a scientific conference. The second one, how to make your scientific posters stand out. And the third one, less is more advice for keeping your poster concise. Okay. So, I mentioned an elevator pitch. I'm not sure if any of you have ever used this um, terminology, but what is it? Basically, it's a really short um, couple of sentences designed to pique the interest of your potential audience. It should be a short synopsis containing three vital pieces of information. What is your research topic? What did you find out and why is it important? The aim here is to get your audience hooked and they wanna um, listen to you more. Um, you wanna make sure this pitch is punchy, intriguing and relevant. Now, and a side note on this, 
Um, being able to create and deliver an elevator pitch is a really valuable skill to learn and develop. It's gonna be a useful tool in many different types of career, whether that be in academia or in industry. So it's a really good skill to learn. Okay, so assuming your elevator pitch has piqued somebody's interest, you wanna go into a bit more detail. They're gonna ask you to talk more about your work. And this is the point where you need your research story. So this is a more de detailed description of your work, a narrative of your research. And it should be five to 10 minutes in length. Don't keep it too long. Now, like all great stories, your research story should have a beginning, a middle and an end. Hopefully you've designed your poster in a concise and logical way. So it should be easy to point at relevant sections and figures on the poster as you tell your story. So what should your story look like? So like all stories, it has to have an, a beginning. So this could be an introduction and this is where you're setting the scene. So you wanna think about what's the necessary background information about your research that the audience need to know in order to understand what you're talking about. Once you've given a little bit of background history, you wanna describe how did that lead to your research question? What were you hoping to find out and why? Then you wanna consider who are the main characters in your story? So this could be a disease model, it could be a drug, it could be a cell type, a brain region, a technique. Think of them as a character in your story and describe a little bit about their characteristics. So you've set the scene for your story, then you go into the middle. Now this is the, the adventure. So this is where you describe how you get from your research question to your conclusion. And why did you take that route? What did you find out on the way? And were there any interesting twists in the tale that could add a little bit of color to your story and make it sound even more interesting? Then you come to the final section, the conclusion. This is what was the consequence? What did you find out? What does it mean for your characters in your story? Um, is it the end of the adventure? or are there more adventures to come? This is where you can talk about your future work. And this is where you can really engage your audience um, and ask for their opinions and their feedback. Okay, so prepare this story in advance. Make sure you have all the key points memorized and you know where on your poster each point in the story relates to. Then we come to the most important thing, make sure you practice. Um, you need to understand what all the figures on the posters show. Make sure you have this uh, elevator pitch memorized. So when somebody comes up and says, tell me about your work, you can just reel it off without having to worry too much. And this will help with the stress management type of things. Um, know all the key points of your research story without having to refer to any written notes and without having to look at your poster too much. You want to be looking at your audience and talking to them rather than reading things off your poster. Make sure you're ready to answer the most likely questions with confidence. Um, and also, um, as Shafrin said, um, make sure you know how to deal with difficult questions that you can't answer. Feel Free yourself up to say you don't know and ask the opinion of your audience. Maybe they have some ideas that can help you. Um, but to have that confidence, say, I don't know, maybe um, we can discuss it and they can help you come up with some ideas. Now, it's really important to practice um, this um, presentation with a trusted friend or colleague. Now, this doesn't need to be someone in your lab. It could be a family member. It could be someone that you trust to give you honest and critical feedback. You want someone that's going to tell you if something's wrong. Um, and not just tell you it's all brilliant. Get them to ask questions and, and get them to really push you. And then when you come to the actual presentation, you'll be really confident and you will have already faced a lot of the questions that you might come across. So get to the day. Um, so this is where the nerves are gonna start. Um, so on the, on the day, you're gonna feel nervous and that is okay. But if you've prepared and practiced, you'll know that you've done everything needed for a successful session, that you couldn't have done more. 
So firstly, double check the time and duration of your poster session. Um, a little bit like today, we realised that you're all on European time and we're on UK time. So we <laughs> had a little bit of a scrabble around. Um, make sure you double check the time and check how long your session is. Um, arrive in plenty of time to place your poster on the board. Um, make sure you've got some fixings, some Velcro, some um, uh, safety pins, anything that you need. Um, if you've put your poster up the day before, arrive in plenty of time to make sure it hasn't fallen off the board. I've seen it happen where people come along and their posters all on the floor and they have to scrabble around. Get there in plenty of time. Make sure you've slept well the night before and that you're not hungry. I mean, I know it sounds obvious, but when we're at a conference, it's really tempting to go out and see the sights, drink lots of beer. Um, try not to the night before your presentation. It is really important that you're well rested and well hydrated and not, not nursing a hangover or something like this. Um, poster sessions can sap energy if they're really busy. You don't wanna be yawning or having your tummy grumble during the session. Make sure you have a bottle of water there. Um, you might be talking a lot, so you wanna make sure that you don't have a cough and you don't get a hoarse throat when you're delivering your poster presentation. Um, you also don't wanna get dehydrated. Sometimes conference halls are really um, air conditioned and they can dry you out a lot, so make sure that you've got water with you. Also, dress for the occasion. So what do I mean by this? Um, we've all got our own personal styles, right? And we, we're dressed in various different ways. However, for a poster presentation, dressing in a smart professional way is probably a good idea, right? So err on the smarter side of casual. So this means that you mean business, it shows you're a professional, people will take you more seriously. So what should you wear? I mean, something like a smart top shirt or blouse, um, paired with smart trousers or a skirt was probably a good idea or a smart dress if you prefer. I can't stress enough that your shoes should be comfortable. You might be on your feet for a number of hours. Um, so probably best if you go for flat shoes, but make sure they're smart and clean. Um, it's really important to consider the temperature inside the conference hall. Um, the rooms can get really warm during a packed poster session. So maybe wearing thinner layers would be a good idea, but have a jacket or cardigan handy as well, um, because uh, the air conditioning can sometimes be a bit fierce in these conference halls and it can get chilly. So make sure you have a couple of options. So you've done everything, you've done all the preparation, you're on time and you're at your poster. So Hopefully you've prepared your poster so it's visible from about three metres away. That means as people are walking past, they will be reading your poster as they walk past. So you really want to engage your audience and get them to come to talk to you. So be enthusiastic. Your research is exciting. People are making a, an effort in their day to come and talk to you about your results. So when somebody comes up, Invite them to come to your poster. Ask them about their work first. That will help you to gauge the level of your discussion. So they might be very close to your area of research, in which case you can go into loads more detail about your research and they'll understand it easily. Or you might find someone's from a completely different field, in which case you need to change your approach, maybe explain things more in layman's terms and simpler terms so they can understand properly but you can only get that from talking to them on a two-way level, all right? Um, if there's a quiet period in the poster session, talk to the people next to you. Um, they might be bored, they might be nervous, and if you talk to them, that will make them feel much happier. So you wanna be welcoming. You want people to want to come and see you at your poster. Um, it's quite important at this point, remain with your poster the whole session. It might be tempted to nip to the loo or grab a drink or something, um, but try and stay with your poster. It's a really great opportunity and you never know when a great collaborator could be walking past. If you do need to leave, it's a great idea to make sure your um, contact details and maybe even a photo of yourself are clearly visible on your poster. And that way people can pick you out from the crowd 
if they want to come and talk to you. When you're at your poster, smile. Okay, that's the most important thing. People are most likely to approach your poster if they're greeted with a genuine smile. Use open and confident body language. That means stand up straight, your hands by your side. Try not to fidget or touch your hair or your face. Um, trust me, if you're feeling nervous, um, if you use this positive body language, it will release all sorts of chemicals in your brain and it will make you feel better and it will make you feel more confident. So a little bit like in, in the previous talk, um, you will feel fear and you will feel uncomfortable, but you can even try this at home. If you're having a bad day, stand up, walk around, smile, feel confident or look confident and your body will make you feel confident and happy. All right. Um, so physically stand at the side of your poster so people can see your poster from a little way away. Um, try not to stand in front of somebody else's poster. Um, if <laughs> Don't get in the way of their audience. But think of the poster as a conversation starter. Invite people in, invite them to read more and try and get a two-way two conversation going. It's very, very important when you're presenting your work that you check that your audience have understood what you've told them. Um, now, the best way to do this is to ask them. Um, ask them if you need to explain anything in more detail and ask them for feedback. So this could be feedback on your research. It could be the content and design of your poster, or it could be your delivery and presentation. Ask, ask, ask for any feedback you can get. Um, one tip I can give here is to ask open-ended questions rather than closed questions. So this means um, not to ask questions that somebody could just say yes or no. So an example of a closed question is, did you understand that? and someone would just go yes or no. Much more useful might be to ask something like, um, could you point me to a section you'd like me to go into more detail on? Or may I ask if you have any other interpretations of my results? And that will get more of a conversation going um, and you'll get a much more detailed level of feedback and people may give you more ideas to take back to the lab with you. So when you do get feedback, it's important to welcome it. All right. Be prepared for a more in-depth discussion and don't be defensive in, in the face of criticism. Somebody may point something out in your results that they think are wrong. Um, they may point out a typo. They may point out anything. Um, embrace it. Don't get defensive. Um, discuss it. Find out why they feel that way. Just um, find out their opinions. And remember to thank them for listening and discussing with you and thank them for your feedback. Um, don't forget that people that have come to your poster could be potential colleagues or employees, employers of the future. So that first impression will really, really matter. So a poster presentation or presenting at a conference is a great opportunity to expand your network. Um, so if someone is particularly interested in your poster, maybe suggest to meet them afterwards for a coffee and you can open up your laptop, you can discuss things in much more detail and it'll open up many more opportunities for collaborations. Um, at least exchange some contact information um, and maybe contact people on LinkedIn, send them an email afterwards. Even if you don't get the contact information, you can always contact with them on LinkedIn and find out the contact details and just say it was lovely to meet them. And this will really help to expand your professional network for the future. So even if they're not working in your area of expertise, but you had a nice conversation, it's worth linking up with them because you never know what the future might hold and where you might meet up in your future lives. Um, I can't stress enough how useful LinkedIn is. So if, if you're not on LinkedIn already, get a profile on there. It will really help you to expand your future network. OK, so this is a little bit of a shorter talk than was advertised in, in the program, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions um, about this. Um, 
but I just want to bring your attention to a few resources that Scientifica have on our website. Um, so we have the NeuroWire blog. This is really, really useful. So that's where this article on poster presenting um, is located and lots more tips and tricks um, for various, various parts of your career. Um, we also have the Learning Zone and that's got guides and application notes on a variety of experiments. It's got um, advice on contrast techniques in, in uh, microscopy, cameras, light sources, all sorts of different resources that you can dip into. And if you want to learn more about the neuroscience aspect, then you can sign up to our news bulletin and that will give you um, lots and lots of case studies about different research aspects. Um, it's all free um, and you can um, sign up to any of these things, the Learning Zone and the NeuroWire, you can just dip into any time you want. Um, and I'd be very, very happy to answer any questions about this topic or indeed anything else that you want to discuss. So thank you very much for listening.